On the Lollygaggers podcast, we continue to ask the tough questions. Like what would win in a fight between Baba Ganoush and Gabagool? Continue listening to find out. In this episode, Justin raids Old Deer in Spider-Man's many backpacks, while Jeff plays Santa Maria and irrationally hates Jude Law. Both Lollygaggers then break down the awkwardly titled Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan before ending with the Gentleman's Challenge. All right, welcome to episode number 24 of the Lollygaggers podcast, a show about all sorts of different geek things, from comics to games, TV to movies. I am one of your hosts, Jeff. I'm the one, Justin. How's it going, man? I am playing hurt, dude. Uh, I've been sick all week. I am sucking pretty hard, and I know that sounded strange, on a Hall's sugar-free mint-flavored thing so that I don't Sounds delicious. into the mic. So if I just randomly mute myself uh, for no particular reason, it's because I probably am uh, coughing up a lung. So uh, yeah, but a plain, plain hurt, plain hurt. Nice. Sounds good. So uh, I, I see you. You literally just finished uh, your your raid of Battle for Azeroth. Like 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 yeah, it's five gonna be ago. The normal schedule now. It seems uh, yeah, you raid from nine o'clock to eleven thirty, then eleven thirty to whenever we'll probably be done here, like one maybe twelve thirty one. So Justin's like that. Justin's Saturday night dance card yeah. is super packed, super full. It's it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then tomorrow morning, I wake up early for uh, football meetings. So, And then the Browns play tomorrow. It's a full weekend. Wow. I have the Jets Monday night football, but but we had to move our, our uh, RPG day from Tuesday to Monday this week because uh, one of them can't make it on Tuesday. So the one time I'll get to watch the Jets on Monday night football in like the next five years. And uh, oh, well. But uh, I'm have committed. All the nerds over, they're not going to want to watch it. I am totally committed. No, they, they, Josh watches football, and, and so, does, so does Keith. So I am totally committed uh, uh, to the, the whole D&D thing. So anyway, how did the rating go? So it was the first run at, at Battle for Azeroth. So how'd it go? So this uh, this raid is Uldir. Um, it's basically like, you know, Oldham and Oldawar. They're basically all these different places of yeah, creation. Yeah, those are my for... my favorite, actually. Yeah, I like those raids the most. Yeah. So the same type of stuff, but it's not um, uh, it's not so much like creators. It's more old god related. There's an old god Cahoon. It's basically corrupted and created a forge to basically create things in his image, and you're going down into it to stop him. And um, there, there's eight bosses. There's Talok, Mother, Fetid Devourer, Vekvaz, Vectis, Zul, Mithrax, and Gahoon's the final boss. Uh, we got through five of them tonight, which is actually pretty good. I think we only wiped. That's really good for yeah. a first run, yeah. First run, we wiped on Mother uh, because we didn't know the timing of it. Once we got down, we're fine. And then we wiped one time. We wiped twice on Zul because that, that fight is a nightmare. So much happening. But they're all pretty cool fights. The first fight it takes mostly place on an elevator. So it's a really cool little interactive way they do stuff. The second fight, uh, Mother, you basically go through these like force field walls. And when you go through them, it creates like a, a, a group debuff and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Fetid Devour is this giant, like gross uh, chimera. It's got the head of a lion and an and a eagle and a dragon or something like that, or a snake. It's like this disgusting chimera, and basically you have to kill it and kill ads before he eats it and stuff like that, and also vomits all over the party, which is pretty cool, too. Um, Vomit's cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What was that, the one, uh, the boss from Nax Ramus that, uh, that farted on everybody? Oh, that was Grobulus. Oh, that was like my, my favorite fight, because yeah, yeah, I would yeah. tank him, and I would just Still drag up. him everywhere, and he would just fart on you guys. And I would and you were so tiny, too, because you were... And I was like, yeah, I was a gnome. Uh, super tiny, and everybody else yeah. got farted on. It's good times. Good times. And then there's Vekvaz who we killed. Vekvaz basically creates these really cool little like void zones. And then there's also a volleyball element to it. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in a, in a fight. It was still pretty cool. Vectis is like the tainted blood god. And so basically it's about like um, killing these different tainted bloods and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, Zul's just a giant cluster F. There's so much happening and there's so many ads. Um, so. I'm curious how it's going to go. And then we have two more bosses after that. So pretty good. It was, it's a normal run. It's not heroic. So heroic always adds a little bit more. And then if we're lucky, we might do a little bit of mythic. But I'm not crazy into mythic. I'm not, I'm not worth, I don't want to spend six to eight hours playing a video game, you know, 
organized wise. I'd much rather just. I was gonna say, I'm like, didn't you spend like six to eight hours today? Well, it was like three. It was Mm. two and a half hours of Uh organized play. Okay. I don't want to do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, it's really really fun so far. Um. I'm sure we'll get most of it down if not finish it tomorrow. Hope we finish it tomorrow. Um, Oh, you get a rate again. Yeah, yeah. So we do Saturday, Sunday. If we finish it tomorrow, we'll be finishing it before our mythic group does it. So that'd be pretty sweet. So hopefully that happens. So what size of group is this that's doing it, by the way? It's 25, I okay. think. Or 25 yeah. to 30. I can't remember. I think it's 25. It's um, it scales, right? Yeah. So like you can have as many as you want, but you have to fix the numbers. Um, because it scales with the number of people that you bring in. So like if you have 25, you need three healers, you need you know, a certain number of DPS to make a sure, share sure. evens out. So, but it's it's fun. And twenty five is like the most manageable group because it's not too many. Right. Too cool, so, are there any like straight up DPS check bosses? The check. Vectus is because Vectus. he basically he throws a uh, a blood debuff on everybody and it stacks over time. And if you don't kill him by the end fast enough, everyone just dies. So it's it's the yeah. first like damage check and we kill them in one shot so i guess we're okay but it's normal so right. it's not so bad so that cool. that was one ones where they're when they're explaining stuff to me I'm like oh this is a damage check fight if we can't do this we can't finish the raids right <laughs> so and you was, you didn't mention like what what actual class are you rating on like what are you i'm on? playing as a hunter right now i hadn't i haven't done that since old we first started. school so no no his name's pork chop so back back in the day uh, Justin's uh, Justin's first WoW character was named Sorin S O R R I N S O R I N. But he told me he told me that his intention was that he wanted it to be Sauron, like from Lord of the Rings, but he didn't know how to spell it. That's what. He That's did. not what it was. That's exactly what you no, told me. I told you it's a mixture between Boromir and uh, Sauron. So I came up with Sorin. <laughs> Swear to God, you keep on saying it's the other thing. I was thing. in a major. There's no B. Stupid. Like, what are you talking about? It doesn't end in here. <laughs> There's no B. You're there was just Bore, Bore, or it shouldn't have been like Listen, Boron. It should have been like Boron or something, or Sora Mirror. You're real boring right now. Anyways, so <laughs> let's talk about what you guys are talking about because now uh, my feelings are hurt. That's okay. It's all right. Anyway, uh, I am interested in hearing more about how you, you, you guys are doing. Sounds like fun. It's fun. Uh, I, I, yeah. mean, I haven't played a DPS in a long time. Sure. And do, you your, like, uh, do you have your stuff gemmed and enchanted? Yeah. No, I did. It, uh, uh, while we make sure that I do it. <laughs> Before the fight, too, I, was, I didn't repair all my stuff. And he, he pulled me. You know, priests have a pull ability. So he pulled me to the armor just because I was so stupid. I forgot that I needed to repair all my stuff so. that doesn't sound like something you would do like you normally come to to raids completely fully repaired fully prepared. Gem, it's gem <laughs> never miss things at never all never have done that before did you guys have dps meters yeah yeah i was i think i was the first fight i was second okay and i'm um, i'm doing okay but like a lot of these fights require a lot of movement and uh, the second fight sucks because like when you go through the wall you can't fight the boss anymore so there's times during the second fight i'm just sitting there staring at a wall I'm just waiting for them to pull it back over. Could be worse. You so, could be a healer staring, staring at healing meters. That's true. Time. I could be doing that. You're right. So, anyways, that's enough about that. Let's talk about your stuff. What you got going on? Uh, all right. So, uh, my wife and I have really started playing a lot of board games again, uh, which has been nice because there was a good like two months where we just really weren't playing as much as we are accustomed to or want to do. Uh, and so we've we've got these new games on the shelf that we we've collected from like Kickstarters and or, or just from like miniature market purchases over the past few months. And we haven't gotten to play them. So uh, the last episode I talked a little about Brass, which is one of the ones that we wanted to play. And so this uh, this episode I want to talk about a game called Santa Maria. Now this wasn't a Kickstarter game. This is just a, this is just a retail game. You can get it from like miniature market or cool stuff or something like that. Around forty to fifty bucks or so. It's another Euro game. Uh, it's designed by Elif or Elif Zvenson, Christian Abinson Ustby, and it's published by Aporta Games. Um, I hope I did those names somewhat justice. Uh, thematically, it, the theme's pretty, the theme's not great, but uh, basically it puts the players in control of, of colonies, like, you know, actual col- you know colony times, uh, looking to expand and control lands and economies and such in the new world. Um, so mechanically is where this game shines. So thematically, not that great. But mechanically, really, really interesting. Uh, so the game incorporates, honestly, like brilliantly, I think, uh, two mechanisms that I completely love. Uh, one is dice drafting. 
and the other is tile placement. Uh, so I really like these type or tile laying, uh, which is really, those are two mechanisms that I really, really love, especially in Euro games. Uh, and it essentially creates this really unique puzzle that I've never really seen in any other game. Now I've played games with tile laying for sure, like, you know, Carcassonne and Isle of Sky. And I've played games with dice drafting, like Twa and, Mar and Voyages of Marco Polo. But uh, like combining these two in the same game is really, really interesting. So each player basically has their own colony board and the colony boards are laid out in a six by six grid. So there's like, you know, 36 spaces, right? Most of which at the start of the game are completely empty. Uh, but some spaces, and it varies depending on which player board you get, uh, have locations which provide different types of resources uh, or money or, or certain actions when they trigger. Uh, and as the game progresses, you can fill your grid out with new cardboard tiles that you lay onto the board, kind of like Tetris, um, like, you know, how you're like kind of making a puzzle, but it's not, you don't have like really crazy varied uh, sizes. Uh, it's really just like one, like two by one, two by one row and then one like L-shaped tile. That's it. Um, so over the course of the game, you can get more and start filling out this six by six grid. Uh, which will give you extra buildings and villagers and stuff like that and little tiles, you know, little spots that'll let you do other actions and gain other resources. It's really awesome. Um, so like during like the, the game's three rounds long and like one of the things you can do is you can spend resources to get these new things, right? And you can put them on your board. Now, what's really fascinating to me about this game is how you go about triggering these buildings and these effects. So I mentioned how like there's a six by six grid, right? And each column in the grid so one to six is triggered by drafting and using the corresponding white die. So at the start of every round, you roll a certain number of die corresponding to how many uh, players are in the game. Uh, and then those are like in the, those are in like a communal pool. And like you, anyone on their turn, when they want to perform an action, they grab one and then they can trigger the column. And what they do is on your player board, on your colony, you look down the column. So let's say it's like a four, right? And you look down your column and you look at all the specific buildings that you can potentially use and you trigger each one of those in order. And then the the rows in the six by six grid are, are, are triggered by using your personal blue die. Now, every everyone has their own blue die. You start the game with one and over the course of the game, depending on you know how in the strategies you take, you can actually gain more. All right, so let's say um, I have a few buildings in the fourth column on my player board. So every round of the game, there's a limited number of white dice that players can draft and use from a communal pool. And so I take the four dice, the dice that shows four pips on it, right? And that allows me to activate each building uh, in my column. And you activate them in very specific order. It goes from top to bottom if you're using columns. And if you're activating rows using your personal blue die, then you activate you know, left to right in order. And you only activate the spaces that actually have buildings on them, right? And so some buildings give gems, some give grain or wood, or they advance you on the various tracks. So like there's a conquistador track that eventually gives gold or VP. There's also a religion track that gives you more blue die. Uh, and so you have to activate them in order vertically for, for white and, and like horizontally left to right for blue. But when you're done activating all those buildings in that order, you leave the dice, or excuse me, you leave the die on top of the final building to be activated in that row or column, which means that for the rest of that round, and there are three rounds in the game, that building cannot be activated again. So you have to be careful about when do you actually activate these buildings because you'd want sometimes to be able to activate them more than once per round, right? Um, and so you activate rows in the exact same process, except you use your personal supply of blue dice, uh, which can never be drafted or taken from you, which is really nice. So you always have that to fall back on. And the white die, only you can only take a limited amount. So like everyone's going to be able to do, like for my wife and I, for two players, like we, each of us were allowed to do up to three per round. So like I could never do four and take and like leave her with two or something. It's not so much a race, for the quantity, but it is a race sometimes for the pips that are on the die. Um, now, another way you can activate the buildings is actually by spending money. So one coin for to activate one specific building anywhere on your board, two coins for the second time you do this in a round, and then three coins for the third. And if you put, and what you do is you put the coins directly on top of that building, which now blocks it, meaning that you can never activate that building again for the rest of that round. So like placing coins on top of these buildings in your grid or placing dice on top of the buildings in your grid means that you can never activate it for that round again. And everything resets, you know, when you start the next round, but for that first round, which goes several actions, you take several actions per round. Um, so you have to be really cognizant of like, which ones do I, you know, do I want to be able to try to trigger more than once, right? 
Now, the main board of the game uh, has a conquistador track that gives bonus victory points to whoever leads uh, on that track at the end of the round. And you advance on that track based upon certain shipping, uh, shipping things that you can collect and certain buildings on your colony board that can trigger it. There's also a religion track that gives you more blue dice. You can have, like, I think for my wife and I, we could actually have up to three per game. So, you can, so the further along you, you, you go, you get more blue dice. There's also like bishops and scholars, which add like victory point conditions and stuff like that, which gives maybe in certain cases you get extra actions. In some cases you get end of game scoring bonuses, uh, which are really nice as well. Uh, Cause you take your, like, as you move forward on that religious track, you gain monks and you put these monks on these scholars and these bishop tracks, which is kind of nice. Um, then there's the, the shipping stuff, which is like a left side, which is on the left side of like the main board. Um, and like, depending upon what resources you have, you can like buy different shipping tiles and bring that ship into your Harbor. And at the end of the round, you get like victory points and extra bonuses of resources and things from having those shipping tiles. And again, all of these actions are basically from the colony that you have, the grid, like all those buildings are triggering those actions. And so placing dice and placing money, you know, and triggering those columns and rows of those individual things are what give you these actions. Um, now, it is an absolutely amazing game. Uh, I find the mechanics, the mechanisms of these games to be pretty fantastic. Um, the theme is like, honestly, it's throwaway. Like, I don't think it's great. I think they could have probably done a, like a different theme. It's not particularly, there's not a whole lot of depth there. It doesn't really play out too much in anything what you're doing. But I think the, me like, the mechanisms are amazing. Um, and it's really like the first time we played, my wife and I just sat there and stared and we're like, we have so many things we could do and we just don't know in what order to do them. But after a couple games playing, like it's making more sense. Um, and you really have to figure out how to like maximize your efficiency with your resources and with your money. And like, when do you trigger and do you trigger this first? Or do you, do you draft this die first? Or do you use your own personal die? Um, it's really, really good. Um, really interesting. Uh, so I love it. Um, I'm a big fan of it. There's no direct conflict. Like you don't like, do any sort of take that you can't attack the other person's colony or or steal their resources or anything like that. Um, so the only real interaction, like where you use like blocking people by taking you know the shipping tile that they wanted or drafting uh, the, the the colony tile that they wanted or the dice that they wanted, because there's a lot of little drafting choices you could do. Um, that's really it. So there's interaction for sure um, in that regard, but it's not mean, so which is really, really nice. So I'm a big fan of this. Again, this is a retail game. Um, I didn't check the stock uh, before we recorded, so I don't know if it's in stock yet or if it's stock again. Um, I know the first, like I, I got like the second printing uh, of it and it's been out for about a year at this point, but it's in the 40 to $50 range. It's a really, really good game. And if you like puzzly games, if you like uh, games that require like some spatial orientation, uh, but also like efficiency of actions, uh, I think this is like the perfect kind of marriage of these two things. So that's Santa Maria. It's by Aporta Games. Uh, highly recommended. Very, very good game. All right, man. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, speaking of games, yeah, uh, I got a new one today. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, it's called a. So it's a little known indie game called. Okay. Uh, I think it's pronounced uh, Sp Spiderman. Sp Spiderman. Yeah. Spiderman yeah. on Spiderman. the PS4. Mm -hmm. uh, Spider Man. Marvel Spider Man on PS4. I got that today. Oh, that I, makes more sense. That yeah, yeah, that that makes more sense. I've been looking for this for a long time because I'm a tremendous Spider Man fan. He's my favorite. Uh, I Marvel didn't character. know that about you. Except and uh, all of his games up till now have been complete garbage, gutter trash. Other than Spider Man Two, back that's not the, okay. I was gonna say I'm like there was a really is. good one on PlayStation Two. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, this one came out and it's brought to you by Insomniac Games. Insomniac Games came out with Spyro, Ratchet and Clank, Resistance. Um, a whole bunch of stuff. Hey, I played uh, Resistance. My wife and I played that. that yeah, good. so that's yeah. Insomniac because that's their pedigree they come from. So basically, it is a PlayStation Four exclusive game. I bought it online, so because I bought it online, I got a couple extra uh, skins. Because a big part of the skins, a big part about the game is lots of different suits that he gets. Because Spider Man is known for all the different suits he wears. So right. the special suits that True. I got are they still like online, red and right? blue or? No, no, no. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of different oh, garbage. Jesus, that he puts ridiculous. On. Uh, but ridiculous. one of them that you get from the online the download, you get the noir Spider-Man. Um, and that's kind of like um, black, like peak coat type of look. It's very noirish looking. And then uh, not like venom colored black. No, color. no, no, no. It's 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 more like steampunky look is the best way I could describe it. Okay. Um, and then you also get the Scarlet Spider-Man. 
which is sweet 90s retro with the sweet uh, hoodie and the uh, Clone Saga stuff. So got that. So game's great. I love it so far. The uh, acting in the game and the mocap and all that stuff is just unbelievable. Um, I, I'm blown away by the facial uh, detail they put on stuff. And then I all the little stories. Hair, that you were blown away by the facial hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Blown away by his facial hair. That um, you can't like see that. because he's got a mask on. Yeah. Um, a few things. Uh, it's totally open world, just like the old Spider-Mans were. Um, so th- it's the best way I can kind of equate this. It's very Batman-y. You know how they do like a yeah. Batman Arkham. I was going to ask, is it like a like a GTA style open world? Like an open city? You can go wherever you it's want. It's more like, the best way I can describe it, like a lot of games are doing this, where it's like this. You can do whatever you want in the space they give you. Um, like GTA or Batman, where you can just like you have small little objectives you can do, you have side quests you can do, and then you have the main storyline you can do. So like, okay, basically how that okay. works. That's fun. Um, there's all these different collectibles. Like one of them is if you run around and grab uh, old backpacks you may have left on the wall at some time, even though uh, narratively it doesn't make any sense because his webbing would dissolve after an hour. But either way, Jeff, I, I digress. Um, so basically, he's got. <laughs> He's got uh, backpacks all over. You find the backpacks got cool little things in it. So it's got like stuff from movies or from the. Are they his backpacks or is he just like stealing people's stuff? So apparently he's got a thousand backpacks and he just keeps running out of them. Dude likes backpacks, man. Yeah. Some people Um, like shoes. Some people like games. He's all about backpacks. He's like some Jan Sports. Um, Jan Sport does make a good backpack. I still got one of those. Uh, There's a camera mode where you can go around and take pictures of. historic landmarks because this is a hundred percent one-to-one remodel of all of uh, new york city it is astonishing how beautiful this city looks how detailed it is how alive it is well that's clearly not accurate because i've been to new york city it's like a freaking cesspool no i love new york city what am i talking about like there's stuff going on everywhere, um, and, you, and like there's points to these things. Like they don't just have collectibles for collectibles. Like you get these collectibles, and then you use them to unlock stuff. So like, for example, if I get two uh, landmarks marked off, and then I also have a certain amount of XP given, then I can go get a suit that I really like. That that's really interesting, or upgrades to my suits. Or upgrades to my abilities, and I get XP and stuff that that builds into it. It's not just like in Batman when you would collect the the question marks. You're just collecting question marks to collect question marks. This one you're collecting them. There's an actual reason for it. It's a it's a tender for you to you know buy stuff, purchase things in the game for like different aste- aesthetic looks or just actual performance. Um, combat's a lot like Batman, but better. Uh, they have the the Reaction stuff where if you have that little, uh, for him, it's spider sense, the little spider sense above your head, you can react and stuff like that. But there's so many things you can do. There's so many little combos and everything seems so fluid. It's almost, it's almost unreal how realistic it looks, like how cinematic it looks. Um, trying to think here. Comment. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 the material they're pulling from is not from the movies. It's, it's, from the comic books, but it's like they're taking okay. a couple of their own civil liberties with it. They're taking a lot of characters from the comic books, a lot of these uh, different ideas and of most recent comic books too. Like I'd say in the past five years type of comic books. So those characters like maybe you don't know because you haven't read those, like they're not as classic characters, but um, they're just really pulling from that type of stuff, which I think is interesting because there's a lot of good stuff. Um, but some of, some of the characters, most people wouldn't know. So I'm, uh, and also there's also a little mission where you have to be, you're Mary Jane, where you walk around as Mary Jane, which I thought that was really cool too, where like, you're not just playing Peter Parker and doing different stuff as Spider-Man, like that happens, but like these narrative storylines where you, you're Mary Jane and you, you're doing all these different things, I thought that was really, really good. So I think it's fantastic. I've completed, I think, 20% of the game, 18%, because I've been spending a lot of time just running around and picking up garbage just to get better suits. Cause the last suit I got was the uh, movie suit, the one from the actual homecoming movie. So I have the homecoming suit that I'm wearing now on my character. And I don't know the thing that's really interesting too, is like they don't show you what the next suit is until you reach that level. 
So it can literally be anything. So I th I'm really looking forward. I really want, I, I need. I just need the Venom suit. Just give me the Venom suit. That's all I really want. Give me the black suit. That's all I really care about right now. So that's all I'm hoping for. So Spider-Man cool. PS4, pick it up today. Uh, it's unbelievable. And uh, hopefully I can get it Elgato one of these days so I can start putting it on my stream too. So mm. anyways, that was my second thing. What's your second thing? All right, so I just got a couple quick hits, uh, some TV news that uh, I've been looking at the past few weeks, haven't been able to squeeze it into the previous episodes, so I'll drop it here. Uh, so the first is a little follow-up on a show I talked about several episodes ago, uh, many, many episodes ago, one of the first episodes we actually aired. Uh, it's a show called The Alienist. It was on TNT. Uh, it was a 10-episode show. It was a uh, it was billed as a limited series. Uh, but it turns out that it's going to be a little bit more like uh, an anthology series, uh, kind of like the way uh, that American Horror Story is, uh, but with not necessarily a revolving or changing cast. Um, so The Alienist uh, was it, it took place around turn of the t turn of the twentieth century, so like you know between eight you know eighteen ninety five nineteen oh five somewhere around there. I'm not sure the exact year, but that was the era, uh, and it and, and it focused on a character who was sort of beginning the idea of like forensic psychology and like understanding and trying to get into the minds so of like of like a serial killer that was uh, running around New York City. Uh, and so it starred uh, a couple different folks. Uh, your your friend, uh, what's his name? Is is it David Brule or Daniel Brule? Uh, you know the guy from uh, from like not Winter was it Winter Soldier? The guy from Winter Soldier. Uh, he was in it. Oh yeah, um, yeah. The uh, the guy who plays Zemo. Basically. And then Dakota Fanning uh, as well. Um, so that series, even though TNT had built it as like its limited series, it turns out they're getting a second. Season, though season might not necessarily be the way uh, I think that they're going to bill it, bill it or market it. Instead, um, they're going to have a second or at least a continuation of another 10 episode series called The Angel of Darkness. That's what's going to be called. Um, or at least um, that is the name of the book uh, that the follow up to The Alienist by Caleb Carr um, was based on, right? So, like, The Alienist was by Caleb Carr, and then they made the show out of it. And now, the second book in that series or that or with those characters came out in Angel of Darkness. So, they're going to be making that as well. Um, it earned a bunch of different Emmy nominations and stuff like that. Uh, so, I think it's really good. It was a slow burn, but pretty interesting. Um, and it also was kind of like a cool period piece, too. So, second season, happy to hear that. All right, so the next thing uh, is another uh, renewed for second season for another show that we talked about uh, not too long ago, actually. Uh, one of our breakdown uh, shows called Castle Rock was on Hulu, which is a kind of Stephen King anthology show. So Castle Rock uh, is a, you know, set in modern day. It uh, stars uh, a few different folks, uh, most notably, or most, most recognizably, I would say. It's got um, Sissy Spacek in it. It's got Bill Skarsgård from It. Um, Scott Glenn from The Leftovers, who I love, um, along with you know Andre Holland, who's from American Horror Story. He's kind of the lead. So the the show is is not necessarily based on one singular Stephen King uh, Stephen King book, uh, but instead it's sort of like inspired by the worlds of his you know of of his work. And the first season is still airing on Hulu, and there's I think a couple episodes left. Um, I've been keeping. Up with it, I think I'm two weeks behind, but I have been continuing to watch it since we did our did our breakdown. But second season in coming is coming, which is kind of cool. Um, it got weird, man. Like it was weird to begin with, but I'll tell you, like it got weird around like episode four or five, I think it was, where it's just like time started. I was like, I'm like, am I watching Lost all of a sudden? There's like all this weird stuff that uh, like like theories that started coming to play um, when uh, when Andre Holland's character uh, met with a. A, a deaf dude out in the uh, out in the woods and uh, hopped into his van. It was like, oh, oh, okay. So anyway, Castle Rock season two. That's pretty cool. And then the last of my pieces of uh, news for TV is one I'm actually really excited about, um, but also a little bit frustrated. Uh, Apple has greenlit uh, a TV show based on Isaac Asimov's Foundation series. Uh, so this is on TheVerge.com. I was reading this. Um, so Apple TV is giving a straight to series order for an adapt adaptation of that. Tr uh, that foundation trilogy. So it's three basic books. Uh, that is my favorite Asimov work. I remember reading that. Uh, my friend Richard, um, who uh, was actually one of your brother and mine's roommates uh, back in college, if you uh, you probably met him at some point, but he uh, he actually recommended the series to me way back in the day when we were in high school. 
Um, but I love that series. And it's a series that spans like a ridiculously long time as like the fall of like human civilization and then like kind of like the rebirth of human civilization. So it's a it's a, it's a entire series that that has an immensely like long timeline so that you're not following like the same character throughout the whole book or the whole series. You're like jumping to different uh, important moments and sort of like the defining moments uh, as human humanity like attempts to sort of reposition itself as it you know kind of goes through this evolution um so i'm really excited about that i have no idea what the hell it's going to look like yet um but it's coming from david s goyer who did batman begins and man of steel and josh friedman uh, who did terminator the sarah connor chronicles um with lena Headey from uh from game of thrones um and he's also the one i think who's in charge of the yeah he's in charge of the snowpiercer tv show that's coming um so the studio apparently worked on Altered Carbon from Netflix, which I really love. So super looking forward to that. No real idea, but the estimate is maybe as early as March of 2019. Um, don't really know a whole lot more about it, but it's something I'm going to be looking forward to, uh, even though it means I have to figure out a way to get Apple TV. I don't know exactly how, but uh, so that's it. That's my TV roundup. Uh, you got anything else for us, Justin? I just got something small. Um, so big news came out this week from Marvel. Um they released a whole bunch of stuff for Captain Marvel coming out. Um, I don't know if you saw the the Entertainment Weekly uh, post. Did you see any of that at all? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think I read Entertainment Weekly. I mean, I followed some of the stuff trending on Twitter, but that's about it. So they released, I think it was 10 different photos of stuff. Yeah. They had uh, a cover, including her and her overall suit and everything. It looks pretty solid. It looks basically the way it's supposed to look. Um, a bunch of different set photos. It's set back in the 90s, so a couple things surprised me, which I thought was interesting, and I didn't think of until now, until I saw it. But a main player in the movie is Ronan the Accuser, who is the villain from Guardians of the Galaxy, because he is a Kree. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so it's all about the Kree nation, and uh, their want to to eradicate the Skrull Empire from the galaxy. It's about the Kree-Skrull world, war. And uh, so they have <clears throat> Ronan the Accuser is in it, um the guy in guardians of the galaxy that he was also in gladiator i forget his name uh the black guy from gladiator i forget his name wow just so racist but you know who i'm talking about i mean i'm gonna let you hang on this like this yeah is, that's fine right? i'm that's not gonna fine. help you out at all we all know who i'm talking about uh uh-huh. he's also gonna be in the, Sh- the shazam movie uh he's he's in it too because that he used to be a kree warrior and then he left it to be kind of an outlaw with uh with the uh scavengers and stuff like that so Deman hunsu yeah there you go and uh showed a whole bunch of kree uh people showed her in like their kree uniform in the original comic book the kree uniform is a white uniform with a giant green saturn on it with a really oh, that you remember because it's a yeah. white i see okay yeah yeah, yeah 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 you got it you know you know uh but this one's just kind of like the captain marvel uniform but just with green and blue Hughes to it. And then another thing I didn't realize until I saw these pictures, I'm like, hey, Jude Law's in this. I didn't know that. And I'm like, who's Jude mm. Law playing? I bet you he's who playing Marvel. Cares? And he's playing Marvel. He's playing, he's playing the original Captain Marvel who funny story, a little in fact for me. I have a uh, completely irrational dislike of Jude Law for Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I knew that. That's why I wanted to I have no idea why I don't like him. I just really don't like him. I don't know why. I just don't like him. But uh, he's playing Marvell, who was the original Captain Marvel, who ends up having an affair with Carol Danvers, and through his time of spending time with her, uh, transfers his powers to her, and she becomes the new Captain Marvel after he passes away from cancer. He's been dead in the comic books for years. Um, so I think that's very, very interesting that he's there too, and he's the he's one of the main characters. That's, I thought it's like I, I didn't even think about it. And the biggest thing is they showed the scrolls. The scrolls are a big, a big thing because the scrolls were owned by Sony for Sony for a very, very long time, and uh, they showed them. They have great pictures of them, and they look pretty legit. Um, they look just like the freaking comic books. It's not, it's not even kind of different. So I'm really looking forward to see what they do with them. Scrolls have the ability to shape shift. That's their big thing. That's how they survive. That's how they infiltrate and take over worlds is by uh, shape-shifting into the people that live there, and that's why the Kree are after them. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, the, to me, they haven't let me down in quite a long time, and it's going to be weird, and they're really going to use Brie Larson as kind of like a new jumping-off point for the next, uh, 
I guess, uh, phase of what they're doing. So if they're banking on her, this should be okay, I guess, at the very least. So uh, that's all the stuff got Marvel. Just look up Entertainment cool. Weekly. There's a whole bunch of pictures on there. I just, right. I just put up my imager. So, yeah, that's my last thing. All right. And on that note, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, the new Jack Ryan uh, series, right? It's the TV. Breakdown. <laughs> Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan, as the cumbersome title suggests, is the newest iteration of Clancy's Jack Ryan character. Airing on Amazon, John Krasinski is the newest actor to take on the role, following in the footsteps of Alec Baldwin, Harrison Ford, Ben Affleck, and Chris Pine. Now, whereas those actors took the role to the big screen, Krasinski displays his Jack Ryan over eight small screen episodes. Now, the series sees Jack Ryan as a lower, lower level CIA analyst in a department recently taken over by James Greer, played here by the ageless Wendell Pierce. Uh, now, during their first meeting together, Ryan pitches Greer on a new terrorist concern he's been tracking, a man by the name of Suleiman, who has been moving considerable amounts of money throughout the Middle East and Europe in what Ryan believes is a precursor for a 9-11-like attack. Now, the investigation leads both Greer and Ryan to Yemen to interrogate a banker who might have some knowledge of these economic transactions. Now, as we might expect, their suspicions are justified, and an explosive confrontation not only reveals the mysterious Suleiman, but sets the stage for 10 episodes of investigation and basically chasing. Now, during our breakdown, we'll focus on only the first few episodes and our early impressions of those episodes, and should we decide to give away heavy spoilers, we'll offer a warning. Uh, still, if you want to go into the new Amazon series completely fresh, it's best to skip forward now to the Gentleman's Challenge. With that said, Justin, what did you think of Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan? Because that's that's the title, Tom Clancy's Jack um, Ryan. I'm not u- usually into these types of shows. Like I don't watch home. Tom Man. Clancy's watch- Jack Ryan. Yeah, well, I'm into their video games. I'm just noting obviously. like that's the title of the show. Yeah. Tom, Clancy's Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan. You can just say Jack yeah. Ryan. I know it's marketing, and I knew you had to put Tom. Clancy's well, Jack I think because Jack Ryan was a movie too. No, so it wasn't. It, it, anyway, I mean, like it wasn't a Tom Clancy movie, I guess. Anyway, Tom Clancy, you can't but, uh, copyright the title anyway. I don't know, but uh, I, I've never really watched these types of shows. I've never been drawn into military dramas at it's all. The CIA, whether Justin, they're it's the CIA serial or whatever. It's overseas military stuff. Uh, but I've never really been into it. You know whether it's like a serial thing or like, um, you know, flavor, you know, monster of the week scenario, like an NCIS or stuff like that. I just never have liked that type Wait, of stuff. I know time out. Like NCIS. Time out. Time out. There are monsters in NCIS. I had, yeah, I had it's, no it's idea. It's the new twist. I had never it's watched, around season six. I had never watched NCIS before. Cause I thought it was just like, Hey, it's just solving crimes and whatever. But like, if, now that I know that there are monsters in it, I, you should really give it a give shot. It Mark Harmon yeah. saw a you know, kill Mark Harmon. Who, who Mark Harmon, you know, it's he Mark was Harman. like the, the 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 was it People Magazine's sexiest man alive, like back in the eighties. Just throwing that out there. Okay, he should be back in two thousand sixteen. Yeah, there aren't that many repeats of People Magazine's sexiest man alive. Uh, but you know who who is one repeat uh, is Richard Freaking Gear, which makes no sense, and also Jude Law. Was People Magazine Sexiest Man Alive? Once, All right, I think we're getting which off. Really on makes me mad. Just getting mad at there's just no, line, it's man. ridiculous. Anyway, retreating airline. Go ahead. Anyways, yeah. By the way, uh, I think uh, uh, Jim has had a really rough go since uh, the paper company. Mm. It seems. Um, but I really, really enjoy John Krasinski in this. I think he he plays a really, really good character, and I like he him plays in Jack this Ryan. show. Yeah. Um, he went from Jim to Jack, big stretch. Uh, but I really like him in this show. I thought he's a very likable character. You kind of really want to know who he is. And he's not like a, not necessarily like a broken character, just more like he has things in the past that he doesn't really want to talk about because of his past military experiences. But like as a whole, like he's not like, I think a lot of times, a lot of shows recently have to have their character not just flawed, but just seriously brokenly flawed to a point where you don't want to like them like uh house uh he's a great he's a great uh, doctor but he takes pain pills sure uh you know something like that sure. 
I, I like that he's flawed, but not in a devastating way where it's like, he's a good guy. There's, and he's a good guy. And I, I think there's going to start being a change in media where the want for a good guy is a lot bit bigger now. Like I'm tired of seeing just miserable people you root for, you know? Are you talking about so like, like anti heroes, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like Tony Soprano, like Walt, yeah. Walter White, those type of things. Yeah, yeah. The biggest thing is like Walter White. Like I liked, I think that there was a very strong time for that, but I think that's maybe going towards the tail end of right. it. Right. Because I think there might be a resurgence of, He's a good guy, and he's a good guy. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> more more Jack from Lost and less Sawyer from Lost. Go yeah, ahead. I think we're going more towards. I know you. I know most of your life is ruled pretty by much, uh, pretty much uh, Lost uh, uh, symbolism. I call my I call my I wife that. Kate. So That's yeah, no, I get yeah. it. Like everything, everything is like everything you talk about. So we're we talking like smoke monster, right. or we're we talking right, right, more right. like uh, light monster. I don't know what we're going. Anyways, uh, I like I, I like the plot of it. What I like most about the plot is that because I only watched the first two episodes. What I like most about the plot is they're really taking the time to invest in the characters, even the the supposed villains. You know what I mean? And they're taking the time to rationalize the thoughts of what they're doing and explaining why they're doing the stuff that they're doing. And that's the, the argument me and you always have of. When you have a villain, you can kind of be like, "Yeah, I kind of, I can kind of see where they're coming from," but maybe they just go a little bit too far. I like that, um, and I think that's from at least the first two episodes. The main uh, antagonist of the show, I, I feel like, uh, is somewhat justified in the things that he's doing, even though it is uh, beyond something I would do. But like, obviously, he has good reasoning, good, good a good plot device as to why he's doing the things he's doing. Um, same with his uh, supervisor, like his supervisor's kind of a jerk, but you know, he's not he, like ageless he just, Wendell Pierce. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's got a, he's probably 78 years old, but still I still remember station. him from hackers where they, uh, where they like prank called him and stuff like that. And like, they, they put his number out there in like a personal ad and people started calling him and like talking dirty into his, to his voicemail. Uh, and he's like, Okay. Yeah, yeah. I still remember that, scene. but like Wendell Pierce, I, I think like it's good what they're doing with his character. Where it's like he's a giant jerk, but he's got reasoning, and you know, there's it's not just kind of like him being a dick to be a dick. I was afraid that he was going to be a jerk just for the sake of being a jerk, you know, like marriage, marriage, blah, 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 that type of stuff. But like, no, he's just measuring the people he has and making sure he's not making the same mistakes he made before, you know. So like, I like that. So I, I enjoyed it. Um, this is probably one of the first shows like this I'll probably continue watching because I enjoyed it a lot. And I am really on a John Krasinski uh, hit right now. Like I'm really a big fan of his. And um, I really hope that this just leads to more office shows somehow. I don't know how it's going to, I don't know how it links. I don't know how it's all we get from point A to point man. B. It's all paperwork. Yeah. I don't know how we get from point A to point B on this, but there's got to be a way that Jim gets back in the office. There's got to be something. So. What do you think of it? Okay, so I'm going to start with the things that I liked about it. First, uh, there's a character in the show uh, named Matisse, who every time he goes, he's like the he's like the CIA's military point person. Uh, who he whenever he goes to a new place, he gives himself a new name, and like the new name is like some sort of like country music. Oh yeah, I thought he was. Great. Yeah. Now, I now the reason great. I mentioned him is it's not so much because I thought he was like really good in the show. He was fine. Uh, but his name is John Hugenknocker, uh, which I just thought is an amazing last name. Uh, so that's, that's something I really liked. Oh, uh, the other that's thing good. I found really interesting is that the, the guy, the actor, uh, the actor who plays Suleiman, uh, his name is Ali Suleiman. Like, wow. Like, isn't that amazing? Like his, his last name other than like an E is like the same thing. Uh, and then Abby Cornish, who plays uh, who plays Kathy Mueller, who's eventually going to be Kathy Ryan, uh, as is customary for the Tom Clancy series. Uh, she is a Australian actress in a rapper, and her rap name is known as MC Dusk. There you go. That's, so that's the that's an amazing bit of information. Yeah, so I just I, I wanted to work. provide a positive thing because see, like in, in teaching, uh, I don't think you get this as much in in math, but I know we get this a lot when we're grading papers and things. Like that. You want to do 
you want to do like the criticism sandwich. Like the you start with something good. Call us a positivity then sandwich. Then yeah, then yeah, you hit all the criticisms, then you end on the positive. Because I uh, I was incredibly disappointed with the show. Uh, I I completely disagree with like everything you said. Uh, I actually think this show was not very good. Uh, I was really disappointed by it. And now I'm also I should also also preface like I like Jack Ryan. I read a lot of Tom Clancy maybe uh, excuse me Tom Clancy books when I was a kid. Hunt for October, Some of All Fears, lots of not the whole series, but quite a few of them. Um, I was a big fan, obviously, of like Hunt for Red October and also of Clear and Present Danger. And you were right. Jack Ryan was one of the names of the movies. It was a Chris Pine movies. Jack Ryan, subtitle, Shadow Recruit. Um, I thought his movie was actually halfway decent. Uh, ben Affleck's one was, eh, but like, I'm a big fan of it. And I thought this was actually a really underwhelming show. And you, you said you don't watch things like Homeland and whatnot. And well, I have. And I, I felt like the show was not good because it was very generic kind of paint by the number storyline. Um, the whole sort of terrorist, like the Middle Eastern terrorist plot was very obvious. And I didn't think it was at all had any sort of depth to it. Like it wasn't very complicated. Everything was like super cut and dry. And like, it's just like, Hey, let's have this villain who like, let's, let's say the name, let's say Osama bin Laden a bunch of times. Let's drop nine 11 really. Or so we can get that urgency out. Right. And they, they frequently call like Suleiman like this really sophisticated guy. And yet they never really demonstrate how he's sophisticated. And he just sort of does a, a bunch of stuff, you know, like, like he's clever, I guess, but like they're always kind of one step behind. Now I also have watched the whole uh, season, by the way, I've watched like all 10 episodes or all nine or eight episodes or whatever it was. Um, so I've watched them all and I just think it's not very good. And I don't think John Krasinski is very good as Jack Ryan. I actually think he's um, the worst Jack Ryan so far, which is, even worse than Ben Affleck because, and it's not because of Krasinski. Like, I don't really blame him. I just feel like his character was annoying as hell. Like, first of all, like every time there's a meeting, like a big meeting with all sorts of different CIA folks and whatnot in like a, you know, a conference room or something like that, he always has to like mumble something from the sidelines and then stand up and say something and like every single time. And he's just like, I think he's too intense and like, I think he's, he's too self-righteous, which becomes like a problem later in the actual show. Like his like self-righteousness is so annoying. Um, and it actually be kind of almost bites him in the end, but it doesn't really bite him. And he never really gets punished for it in any way, which sort of sucks. Um, so I thought he was really bad. Like I thought the show was so generic that I was, I was just super disappointed. Like Homeland, at least the first season or two that I watched, uh, I kind of lost it. Uh, because I didn't have Showtime for a while, but I watched the first two seasons, and especially that first season is so fascinating. Like it presents some really interesting questions because the the villain, uh, is, so to speak, is sort of like a turned American, right? And actually, technically, two turned American. Spoiler alert! And like this one was just sort of like super generic. Like it's like you can lift this out of pretty much any any like kind of modern show that's trying to deal with like Middle Eastern terrorism. And I just felt it was sort of the same stuff over and over again. And it wasn't really presented in a way that was all that interesting. I thought like the guy, like Wendell Pierce, who played James Greer, James Greer was played by James Earl Jones in like the original three movies, you know, with uh, Alec Baldwin and Harrison Ford. Like, I thought he was just mean. Like he was just mean the whole time. And like, I don't know, like it got kind of like, like you say, like there was a reason for it, but I don't think there was. He was just mean. Like he was just a mean guy for the sake of being mean. And he was like a really bad boss. Like he didn't communicate well, he didn't delegate. And I'm just like, how is this person in, in, in charge? So like, like overall, like I was really disappointed with this, with this series. Like we, I, we watched the whole thing obviously. So like, I didn't like hate it, but like, I think the reason I'm criticizing it is because I had high hopes for it because I'm a fairly big Tom Clancy, Jack Ryan specifically fan, right? Like I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. Like, well, I think that that's a, that speaks volumes to the fact that I don't watch any. Right, of I know. It's like we're at coming all. at this from different perspectives, like, for sure. Yeah, I I watch nothing. I've never even seen Hunt for Red October. I've never seen Clear and Present Danger. None of that stuff. What? Uh, How have you I not seen, seen Hunt for Red October? I haven't seen it. Like I've never. What is? What? I'm not into military dramas at all, or CIA, or whatever. Or maybe it's just because Alec Baldwin's eyes are just too blue for me to concentrate on. They film. are you know as mean? blue as the ocean. Um, he's they just really so are. beautiful, especially back then. Uh, but yeah, yeah. his head he was, just has gotten bigger. I don't know. Yeah, it's just huge, and he's like a little crazy and drunk. But back then, he's just so handsome. Uh, he's still handsome, but like, like you know, I just never, 
I never have ever been in his show. So for someone like me, this is a good warm up, I guess. <laughs> like, I it's like I like Black Hawk Down, but like not as like a that's to me that's more of like a like a, a war like battle movie, not so much about psychological. Well, war this isn't like really that. a psychological show. This is twenty four without the twenty four second clock or twenty four hour clock. Like that's what this is. This is twenty four. That's what it's attempting to be, just over a longer period of time and without the gimmick of having each episode be an hour long. That's all this is. There's there's not a whole lot of depth to this. Like there really isn't. Also, I've never watched twenty four either. So I well, I mean, episode. honestly, twenty four season one was fantastic. It got a little loopy. I mean, there still pretty good here and there we watched a lot of it with Kiefer um but uh it was you know it's entertaining at least but I think I still would you know it got, got kind of lame after a while and they kept repeating the same sort of stories but yeah I mean like if you're brand new to it sure and you never really been into it fine but I still don't think this is the greatest representation like like I honestly feel like if you really wanted to watch a show like this that was dealing with like intelligence like CIA NSA that type of stuff and dealing uh specifically with like uh, Islamic terrorism and and how like you know we handle it like this is not like this is a super layman way to go about doing it and I feel like Homeland uh, definitely season one at least it, like certainly pushed some boundaries and and, and answer asked some more interesting questions than this ever really did like like I think it's it's telling and interesting like how you talked about how you think that the, there's a movement away from anti heroes and I and I and I guess I can see that because that's exactly what this show is like these are. Like I found these these like the heroes of the show, which is Greer and and Ryan, to be not particularly likable folk. Um, not because they did anything mean or bad, or they had they did drugs, or they dealt drugs, or they killed people, or whatever for for a living. But I just didn't like them. I didn't find them interesting. Like they weren't particularly compelling people. Um, now I think Jack's story, like because okay, so Jack Ryan, he in in in. in the actual, you know, it's canon that he got into a helicopter accident. Uh, and this is true in the books, true in the movies. Um, and he broke his back and he sort of came back because he was a member of the Marines and he came back. And and that's why they make a lot of jokes about him being an analyst. And But he actually has field experience because he used to be in the Marines, etc. But like they really did, a like I'll say that they had a very interesting twist uh, with it, which you haven't gotten to because it's not discovered in the first two episodes. So like that I thought was kind of interesting, but also slightly predictable uh, in a way. Um, I think... I also felt like the relationship that they were building between um, Jack and Kat or uh, Kathy, who will eventually like they eventually get married. I, I don't know. I just thought it was a little bit kind of weird and forced. I, I also I, I feel like they, do you have to do everything in, in season one. Like, I, I don't know, like especially if like they got uh, renewed for season two, like super fast. So I don't know. Like I, I had so much higher hopes for it than um, than what ended up being the final product. Like it's it's produced very well like it looks good the fight sequences look great the explode there's a lot of set pieces that are fantastic i don't think that the 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 the, the bad guy like you said like there's ways you can sort of understand why he's doing things that goes away really fast and that's one of the way one of the reasons i'm frustrated is because like they took a guy who could have been a sort of dynamic complicated interesting guy um but somebody like you can't root for him because he's doing horrible things but at the same time like his complication is interesting and they made him into sort of like just a generic villain. Like just been, oh, he's just a super bad guy now. Got it. Okay, check. And it's how, like as they started to present more and more of his family life, he's like, oh, he's just a kind of a monster, ignorant dude who's just really bad. Got it. Check. So like they lost that opportunity that they set up early on, um, like you talk about. So I don't know. Just it's just I don't think it's great. Like I still, I mean, maybe I had too, you know too high hopes for it, which is certainly possible. And because I've been looking forward to it for a very long time, especially when I saw the cast, I'm like, oh, sweet, you know. Krasinski's in it and like I thought that's awesome I don't you know the rest of the cast is fine but like he's the lead that's the most important one right but like yeah I just I don't know I just didn't think it was I didn't think it was all that great I think it was just sort of a run-in-the-mill underwhelming kind of thing that you know like eh, it was okay like it was okay it's not bad but it's certainly not good you know and I don't think it well I I would give recommendation for it personally from my side um, especially for someone like me who doesn't do this type of stuff a lot, you know, that doesn't get into this type of drama or this type of stuff. So it's, it's a nice uh, Michelob ultra version of Homeland. I'll say that uh, less calories, okay. uh, less sure. calorie type of stuff. Sure. So. Um, I, I would recommend it to people, um, but go in with expect with measured expectations. Like you're not going to get anything like really amazing and grandiose in here. It's, it's, it's good. 
But at the same time, like it doesn't really push the envelope and doesn't really iterate on the formula particularly well, in my opinion. It's just sort of, it's very derivative, I think, of a lot of the other types of these these types of shows and movies. I don't really think it tried to push and do anything particularly interesting. Um, and I hope season two is better. I really do, especially with how season one ended. I have hopes that they're going to do a little bit more, um, more interesting storylines in season two with kind of what they set up at the very end. So, you know, maybe I shouldn't raise my hopes again. Maybe I should keep them low, but, you know, but I would definitely give this like a C plus type of thing. If I was grading it, I would say this is a C plus. Like it's, you know, it's passing. It's probably better than average, but not by much. Like that's that's how I view it. So that's my view of it. Justin says go for it. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty good, pretty good. All right. So with that out of the way, uh, we need to go slap each other with like uh, white gloves. And now it's time gentleman's challenge all right so the gentleman's challenge is a segment we do here on the lollygaggers podcast where justin and i like to give each other a homework assignment uh, this homework assignment is usually a tv show to watch a movie to watch a game to play something like that uh something that might drive the other person crazy or something that the other person might just enjoy and then to ensure that we did that homework we come back in the next episode and we quiz each other about it uh, hoping to embarrass the other uh, i should also mention that this is a very heavy spoiler area we will not uh we, we will definitely probably talk about how certain movies end or how certain tv shows transpire so if you don't want to be spoiled about the topics that we're going to cover uh certainly don't listen to this uh, particular segment so uh justin who wants to go first you you me what do you want to do well, I went last time, so why don't you go first this time? We'll do that. Fine, fine. All right, so Justin uh, assigned me Hunt for the Wilder People, uh, which is a movie written and directed by a Lollygaggers podcast favorite, Taika Waititi. Uh, and it's based on a book by Barry Crump titled, and I love the title of this book, Wild Pork and Watercress. Uh, pretty good. Uh, it's a New Zealand comedy adventure uh, that stars Julian Dennison, uh, who you'll most likely know from as the kid from Deadpool 2 and Sam Neill, who uh, is of Jurassic Park and Event Horizon fame. God, Event Horizon messed me up as a kid. Uh, so Dennison plays Ricky Baker, uh, like a 13 year old juvenile delinquent and orphan who is adopted by Sam Neill's heck. That's the, his, that's his character's name and his wife, Bella, uh, more by Bella than him. Uh, this is Ricky's last shot. Basically, he's essentially a screw up. There's a whole list of things that he does that are bad. Um, including like knocking stuff, hitting stuff, breaking stuff, uh, and vandalizing things and spray painting things, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and if he if he screws up one last time, it's off the juvie he goes. Now Bella and Heck are like way off in the boonies, like they're the bush. They're they're not really near super near civilization. So it's kind of a a wake up call or sort of a, a kind of a fish out of water scenario for Ricky, who walks around in in like these weird city clothes, thinks he's a rapper uh, or a gangster. Uh, it's it's hilarious. Um, so. Ricky and Bella actually bond, um, which is nice, uh, but not so much Heck, Sam Neill's Heck, uh, Uncle Heck. Uh, eventually, Bella dies, and that leaves Uncle Heck with Ricky and a whole lot of uncertainty. So uh, New Zealand's child services uh, require, or at least this is what Uncle Heck believes, I don't know if this is an actual law, a woman to be in the household. So they plan to come back and take Ricky away and find him a different family. Uh, so this does not... Uh, go over well with Ricky, who feels like he's finally actually found a home and he doesn't really want to go away, even even though Bella's no longer around. So Ricky runs away and he takes Bella's ashes with him so that he can disperse them uh, where Bella told him she was from, which is where the earth wets the cloak of the sky, uh, which is basically a really high waterfall in the mountains that they find later in the movie. And uh, now in the process of running away, Ricky sets fire to the barn on the on the the actual grounds uh making it trying to make it look like he was he was inside he leaves himself like a little letter and stuff like that saying oh this is it i'm burning myself and he accidentally sets the whole thing on fire he didn't mean to um he and his pet dog tupac um uh, go into the bush uh it's like the quote bush which is just sort of like the wilderness of new zealand um heck tracks him down um shortly thereafter uh, aiming to bring him back and try to make sure child services doesn't get too upset uh, but in the process of doing so, he breaks his ankle uh, and can't really move. So they have to stay out in the bush for a few weeks, even though child services was coming in a couple of days. Now, child services interprets this as some kind of an abduction. And so this like national manhunt begins, uh, which is exacerbated 
when Heck and Ricky run into some hunters at a lodge and Ricky accidentally makes it sound like Heck has been sexually abusing him, uh, which is uh, really awkward, but also very funny, actually, in a, in a dark comic way. Um, so for the next like four or five months, Ricky and Heck are basically wandering around the bush and they're bonding and they're meeting some strange characters. Uh, including Reese Darby's Psycho Sam, who has a clever hiding scheme where he uh, he he attaches bushes to himself, and so he's part man, part bush, and he lives in like a he lives in like a trailer, and he he has <laughs> he has like a tunnel to escape, but he forgot the he forgot to dig it. What has he been doing in his life? Uh, so the manhunt intensifies until basically all out war breaks out, and the pair are caught. Um, then a montage trial ensues at the end. Ricky gets placed with a family of natives that he actually encountered while in the bush. Uh, whereas Heck gets put in some kind of halfway house once uh, everything kind of gets cleared up. He doesn't go to jail or anything like that. Uh, Ricky invites him to live uh, with the family out on the farm because they need help. And Rick uh, and Heck eventually does do this. And the movie ends with the two of them going out into the bush to track down the Huya. Uh, which is a extinct bird that they uh, found while they were out there during the trial. So it has a very happy ending for a while. It didn't look like it was going to have a happy ending to be honest. Um, so that's, that's like the whole plot summary there. Um, overall, I thought the movie was uh, pretty fantastic. Actually. Um, it was hilarious. I would say it's got a good level of sentimentality, um, but it, it, it really, I think blends sort of the dark comic humor that we see in like some of Taiki, Taika Waititi's other work um, with uh, what is ultimately like kind of a good message or, or like this message about family and sort of finding family of these two um, kind of outsiders that are, are, are kind of bonding in the end, um, despite not necessarily having the best of starts. Um, yeah, it's really good. I think uh, Dennison is awesome in this. Uh, he's super funny. He's absolutely ridiculous. He gets them into all sorts of trouble because of his um, kind of these weird delusions he has about being a gangster and stuff like that and how he's just bored into that life and like he has to do this kind of stuff and um there's this incredibly over the top chase sequence at the end where like military vehicles are chasing after them and stuff like that what's really interesting is that in this show the child service uh woman is rachel house um she plays paula who is in charge of sort of um she's she's like this ridiculous child services representative um, who loves saying like no child left behind like that's her motto but not necessarily a child services motto because that's like an american thing um but she also doesn't like ricky because she thinks she thinks ricky's like a bad dude you know he's a bad egg so to speak uh, but what she where i recognized her from is from season three of wrecked so she's actually in the third season of wrecked as a uh, recurring character and she's pretty hilarious in that as well so um, but overall, I think it's fantastic. Uh, there were tons of parts that I love. The Reese Darby stuff was great. He came in towards the end, sort of like third or fourth act, um, if you're doing like a five act movie here. Um, and he was really, really funny, as he normally is. Um, Sam Neill was sort of like the like kind of like the straight guy on here, whereas everybody else around him was kind of being funny and weird and goofy, and um, especially Ricky. Um, there were two dogs. Uh, there was Zug and there was Tupac. Zug, unfortunately, gets uh, gored by a, by a boar and, and killed. So that was... Uh, Really upsetting. I did not like that at all. And I almost stopped watching at that point because you're not supposed to kill dogs. What's wrong with you, Taika Waititi? You're a bad person. But you let the other one live, so I guess that's okay. So anyway, uh, Hunt for the Wilder People. That's what I uh, That's what I think. All right, that's good. I enjoyed it too. I think everything that guy touches is great. I mm -hmm. also think that his uh, preacher is just fantastic. It's, yeah, he played the and preacher. And what's behind yeah, that so doll? Yeah. Is, no, it's Jesus. Jesus. No, 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 no. What's behind that? The other door. It's another door, and and what's behind that door is Jesus, right? It's kind of tricky, like it's tricky yeah, like you that. Don't, you don't you think? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like I what the hell is so that? Great. Yeah, yeah. I I think it's I think it's a really sweet uh, movie, especially you know when you're regarding the kid, you know, not having anyone who understands him, and then he finally finds a group of people that, through their own weird ways, kind of get him and are willing to love him unconditionally. I think that's very sweet. Um, and uh, all the stuff that they say, all the stuff they do is just great. It's funny um, um, when we, when I was watching my wife watched it last night, um, and I was like, "There's a moment where I'm just like, you know, I bet you Bella dies, and like literally 30 seconds, she's dead. I'm like, oh, hey, look at that. Oh yeah, like, I saw it coming a million miles just, away. There you go. Like got the beat down, perfect. Uh, so it's sort of yeah. fun. Yeah, I know it's definitely gonna happen because uh, like if you look at the cover, it's just it, she's not really in it. Like it's like yeah. it's, mm, you know, well, you ready for your questions? Yeah, then? bring it. All right, question number one. What items 
did Bella leave in the room for Rick? I knew you were going to ask this, but there are like too many. Like there's like a too big of a list. Uh, there's all sorts of crazy different things. I know there's four. The things. one important four, one. Really, the things. one important one. The, the really important one was like the the uh, the water heating pad. Like that was the one that he kept having. I didn't even count that one. Well, that's the that important as, one. I use that, that towards towards the. That's the important one. All the other ones are like completely unnecessary. Okay. Like they're not really even. Things. So, there's I'll give cats, you half. Credit. I think I think there's some cats. Uh, but like, you know, little like uh, statue cats. Um, there were some books, um, but the books were like really freaking old. Um, so I remember that. I don't remember the specific books, but there were books. Um, there's, and then there's another thing. I don't remember that. But that's that's what I remember. So I'll give you half credit because you said you said the, the books too. So books, an Indian lamp. Sure. Which is an sure, sure. So I got an Indian lamp. Uh, there's a bulldog lamp. Uh-huh. Uh, and then a knife to fight away the book. Oh, that's right. The knife. In the middle the knife. of the night. I, think it's the I forgot about that. So that's like six I things. I, I told two. you there. There's not four. There's like yeah. six things. So I'll, 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 give, I'll give you half credit. Right, that's, that's good enough. I knew you were going to ask Next that. Question. I thought about going back and writing them down. I'm like, eh, I'm too tired. I don't feel good. Screw it. What were the possible names for Tupac other than Tupac? So there's Tupac and there was two other uh, possible One of them was like place. Psycho. Um, I think that was one of them. And I don't mm-hmm. remember what the third, what the other one was. Um uh yeah i don't let's see because they wanted him to like represent like how strange he was or something like that he was like how thuggish how he, was, he was yeah i don't remember it was two i remember tupac and psycho i don't remember the third all right so i'll have to give you another half credit that's for right, that one right. uh it was tupac psycho and neutron that was the other neutron. one i was going to use oh no 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 that's not true it was negatron negatron, was negatron. i think i get full sorry. credit because i just corrected you I All right, you got it. Yeah, you got yourself yeah. some. You're yourself yeah. so yeah, yeah, Okay, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Where are we talking? I don't know. All right. Uh, what strange item was in the hunter's packs when Ricky was going through it? The hunter's packs. It was a strangely named item that was in their packs uh, when he was going through it, like gabagool or something like that. Can't remember how it's pronounced. Something like that. Oh, we're real. Close. It's something like that. We're I can't remember close. the exact pronunciation. Real close. You know I got it. Gabag- Come on, gabagool is like an Italian. I know, meat. but like it was food though. Like so, it's not. It's a gabagool, you know. Okay, you're right, but it's not gabagool. Uh, I don't remember exactly. I don't remember the food. I just remember it was like a weird name. It's almost the same type of way to say it. <laughs> it's so Gabag- close. Goose it's so I don't know. Goose. Baba Ganoush. Baba Ganoush. That's it. That's it. There was That's Baba Ganoush. I get half credit for that. I'll get half credit for that. <laughs> So close. I'll get the half credit. You, you, guys, know, you, know, you, know, you know I was in the right. You know I was there. You know He's I was almost there. Saturday. I was almost there. I'm getting half credit. I'll give you, I'll give you yeah. half because so, the, the, the pacing of the words yeah. is the same. All right. Uh, <laughs> next question. Uh, is it possible that you might love Takaiwa TT more than I do? That's my question. Uh, I think he's great. Uh, probably. Um, I think. Okay. So, like, I think most normal. Like people in the world probably, or at least non New Zealanders, know him most for Thor Ragnarok, right? I think that's that's right. Thor Ragnarok, that's that's what he did. Take what yeah, did. and what we do in the shadows. Um, well, I think more, you know, Thor, Thor Ragnarok, right? And I'll say this: that of the three movies now that I've seen by him, because I think I've only seen three, um, I definitely like all of his non superhero movies better. I think they're even better because I think they're much more interesting stories. Like, uh, don't get me wrong, I love Thor Ragnarok. I think it's an excellent movie, but like, I Thor Ragnarok is a Marvel movie. If you let a guy like that play a little bit, right. but it's still a Marvel movie, you know, so it's still got to be in a certain format. But I, so that's why I, I absolutely movie. love everything I've seen from him so far. Um, I'm really curious, like what's going to happen when they do the sequel um, to what we do in the shadows, uh, werewolf, we're werewolves or werewolves. That's what it is. Werewolves. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so I really, really enjoy him. Like I, I think, his humor, like I think my what I find funny, I think aligns with him because there's a lot of darkly comic stuff. Um, but one of the things I really like about his the comedies that we've seen, especially this one, I think this is my favorite of the three. And I think it's because I find comedy when it's paired with like tragedy to be even better than comedy on its own. 
Um, and it's one of the things like I always liked about the show Scrubs is because Scrubs was always very funny, but it also had these kind of poignant moments where it talked about the tragedy of people dying and stuff like that. And I really always liked those two juxtapositions. And it doesn't get me wrong. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I really like comedy as well. But like, like when you watch something like what we do in the shadows, like there's no tragedy. That's just straight up silly, you know, whatever. And Thor Ragnarok, I mean, as much as we want to try to make it seem like these movies are really meaningful. Like I really do think like they don't hold a candle to a movie like Hunt for the Wilder People. So I really, really enjoy them. This is definitely my favorite of his, of the three um, for sure. Like in, and not, not by an inconsiderable margin. Um, I, I definitely, I definitely like it a lot better than, than Thor Ragnarok. And I love Thor Ragnarok. So that should tell you. So yeah, I definitely like him probably more than you do. Um, probably cause. Sorry, Jeff, the answer was no. Yeah. He, he went... No. No, no, I'm gonna go and give myself credit for that one because he made a Marvel movie. I know more yeah, about him than you. Encore stuff. So I know more about him than you. Really? I know his favorite food. Uh, his fit. Uh, you get, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Right? Yeah, the Tiger Beat. I'll tell you what. If you, you know his favorite food. If you can tell me it right now, then I'll say yes. You're right, and I will. It's gabagool. He likes the gabagool. No, that's not true. He likes is... baba ganoush. Sorry, I win. He likes the, he likes the gabagool. That's that's a that's a half credit, half credit, full credit. And then full credits. That's like a three out of four. Man, I crushed that. One. I guess so. Whew. Well, numbers are hard. Like, Let's not care really about think grades. about it. Grades are important. Yeah. All right. Enough of talk about this kind of Taika Watiti guy. Like, who's he? Who the hell does he think of this? Let's talk about some true, amazing television. Justin, what uh, was your homework assignment? You gave me Beyond from Freeform. Yes, that's, that's that's exactly correct. So the IMDb formerly page. ABC Family, Freeform. Yeah. States it as this, a young man wakes up from a 12-year coma to discover he has new abilities that come to propel him in the middle of a dangerous conspiracy. All right. So essentially what happens is you have this kid. His name is one of the dumbest names I've ever heard. Holden. I didn't know that was a name. Really? Holden uh, Caulfield, Catcher in the Rye? Never heard of that? No, never heard of Seminal that. Seminal books. No, history of that's American not fiction. J.D. Salinger. Who's the boss? Not a food. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who's, who's the boss? Yep. Not a food. Yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. okay. uh, Holden Matthews played by Berkeley Duffield, a uh, strikingly more than possible handsome young man. Uh, it's just ridiculous how every person, every freeform show is a 10 out of 10 on the hotness scale. It's, un it's unbelievable. Uh, anyways, uh, he is out with his friend and uh, during one of the nights, uh, during a, 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 a meteor shower, and he gets chased away by his friend's brother who wants to steal his bike. And uh, he like hits him in the head with a uh, motorcycle helmet that runs away. He gets chased down and knocked off the road. And when he's knocked off the road, a giant flash happens. And he ends up in a coma for 12 years. And it's super remarkable because when he wakes up, he has full motor function and, and uh, uh, memories and all stuff. He just lost 12 years of his life. Goes back to his home. Uh, remarkably too fast. Um, the, the the plot holes in this show are just they're the size of sinkholes. Ah, uh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Name one plot hole. Name one. Um, he came out of a twelve month, a twelve year coma, and his mother says, "I'm taking him home because I'm his mm -hmm. mother." And that's not how. Yes, it, works. it is. That's not how against it works. against no. a, a, she, he, she, a ADA against doctor's advice, AMA or no, against medical advice, something like that. Dumb. She it's can do that. Dumb. Are you kidding? She can totally uh, do that. Totally do that. Yeah, but it's, it holding. makes no sense. It makes zero sense. Oh, okay. Like, and the fact that he was in a twelve-year-old coma and like all of his muscles hadn't atrophied and he's in really good shape. Yeah, that makes perfect yeah, that, sense. It's that, ridiculous. Yeah, the, the show has its own internal logic. Okay, and so long as yeah. it adheres to there's that no, internal there's logic, no real logic. It doesn't. You don't need real logic, dude. You're a Marvel freaking superhero fan. Like internal yeah, logic, show, okay. man. You don't right. judge it by real-world logic. Can I? Can I continue, please? <laughs> please. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna just Anyways. berate Beyond from Freeform, then no, you so, can't. He then uh, starts realizing at night he like has weird flashes. Will end up back in the woods where he was seemingly knocked out previously into his coma. He sees some people who are also super handsome and super good looking, like. His childhood friend gets older. He's a, a psychiatrist slash student counselor slash teacher at a local school. Um, he meets a guy that kind of looks like Dustin Hoffman. Uh, that that really does not wants... look like Dustin Hoffman. 
Dustin, that is Dustin not Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. You're ridiculous. Yeah. Dustin Hoffman. Man in the yellow jacket. That uh, is not Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. So he uh he meets him and he really wants him to to expose himself for who he really Listen, is. Like Dustin Hoffman is an avid listener of our podcast. And I just want to say to you, Dustin, yeah. <laughs> I'm very sorry for what my partner uh, has said so about you. That is a, it's a guy in an old freeform show that looks just like your, him. Your nose is much larger than this man's. Much larger. Uh, very serious nose. Remember? He uh, then uh, meets a girl who is impossibly gorgeous that tells him that he was not in a coma for 12 years, but like in an alternate reality where he was doing important things. And that's why he remembers. What does impossibly stuff. gorgeous mean? Like, what, what do you mean? She's a person. Like, where are the fat people? What? There's the no fat people. The father and the mother the are both fat. What are you talking about? Yeah, but for a fat guy, he's pretty handsome. They're all super I handsome and good looking. I mean. And she's been a mother in every single show I, ever, I think. <laughs> so, even when she was starting out and she was like six. Yeah, so like, I don't know, it's just, ugh. anyways, he, he finds out that there's something more beyond it. He has like powers where he can like do like teleport or force things away with force powers it's or something. It's more like force power. He can't teleport. He, yeah. He can do, so, it's more like, uh, it's eh, a little like Magneto, but not just with metal, like with, with basically. Yeah. So. He's just got special powers. That's what it is. I didn't hate it. Okay. okay. I'll say okay. that. I was okay. actually kind of into it until. <laughs> so I wrote, I wrote this. I was writing my okay. notes as I was watching that show. Right? All right. And the first episode, I liked the pilot. I enjoyed the pilot. Okay. I think the production. Even with that crazy plot hole? Sure. I was willing to suspend disbelief. How okay? big of you? How big of I you? I was willing to. But the first episode, I'm like, you know what? This ain't bad. Why did it get canceled? Okay, <laughs> that's literally what I thought. After to myself, two seasons, after the first episode, so I'm watching it, and I was like, this isn't too bad. Then the second episode comes up, and some inking garbage starts coming into it. I'm like, okay, now I wait, what? What happens? They're like when you go, when it has like a flash into like some ink and temple, oh, or whatever yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. all right, now I get it. Yeah. Now I see it's why. The, it's the great. So beyond. like. That's where he's at. Yeah, so Dream it's just world. kind of uh, the overall concept I think is interesting. Being out for 12 years and him being a fish out of water, I like that idea. I like the idea of him having powers he doesn't understand, something happened and there being an alternate reality that he was involved with. I like that idea. But then they start throwing in an extra crap. I'm like, you, you, had, n- you had enough. It was you. You had me. Hooked, I know. And now you're How dare more you stuff. start putting in more stuff in the second episode? That's ridiculous. You were done after just, episode one. You should have just stopped. It's just, you just stopped. It was just got. It got kind of outlandish and stupid. You just played the same episode um, every single time. Like, the pilot, yeah, but like this is also episode two. Row on those, oh, and I don't. I don't know where it goes, but it must not be good if it's gone now. Um. So. A few problems I have with the show was family discussions make no sense. Uh, how many times do they need to tell the kid he's been gone for 12 years? Like, it's just bad writing. Like, hey, man, you've been gone for 12 years. Mm. You've been gone for 12 years. You've been gone for 12 oh, years. I'm going like, to be it's asking bad as, a, as a quiz question. Um, and then uh, just like different decisions like, hey, my brother's been in a coma for 12 years. Let's take him to a rager and get him high and drunk. That's a great idea. Was a rager, even though he's been in a coma for twelve years. Let's just do that. Like stupid decisions. Like I don't get. It. Like if you're gonna take your son home from a hospital to twelve year coma, don't you think you should at least pay a little bit more attention to him and make sure you're making sure he's not wandering out he of the was house, sneaking out, man, going to parties, he was sneaking out. If I'm a parent out with of a child kid? who was in a but if I was, I I didn't go to a twelve year coma. If I had, if I was a parent of a yeah, child, whatever. and my child was in a coma for twelve years, I would have a little bit tighter reins as to what's going on. Let alone maybe a nurse in the house. Listen, because listen, she just, can parent however she wants to parent. I guess okay? so. As you said, she's been a parent in every show she's ever she been in. The so she's got she's got quite a bit of experience. Is what I'm saying. It's just how dare you, sir. How Man, just some of the dare you question. I think it could have been good. It could have been good. Really good but really good. at a certain point, it took a left turn. I'm like, nope, it's bad. It's real yeah. bad. Yeah. 
Um, and the main character is just impossibly gorgeous. Like he's just so handsome. There you go again uh, with that impossibly. Like they're real people. They exist. How are they impossible? I don't. Like he's been in a coma for twelve years. He should look like me. He's right? never. He should never look... felt the feeling of the sun ruining his skin or anything like that. Come on, man. I just, also I, magic, dude. I'm out of a, coma a bunch of magic happening. Perfect, I have the perfect five o'clock shadow, and I have tremendous arms and shoulders. And Holy not crap. A, what know, the hell are you talking about right now? <laughs> it just annoys me. Like I'm just jealous of good looking people. This is like what this is like what pissed me off about Battlestar Galactica right. when uh Apollo lost weight in two episodes. I was like, no, it's it stupid. Two, okay, it was two episodes, but like there was a, a, there's like a month in between those episodes. Even if it was a month, there's no way it was just had like to that. Take the man fat was, suit off. The man it was, was not particularly difficult. So yeah, obviously, yeah. yeah. All right. So, anyways, it was okay, but there's clearly some problems with it. Clearly, so you're wrong. Give me the dumb test okay. questions. I'm gonna there are quiz it. questions. Okay. So if you have test anxiety, I don't want to hear it. These are quizzes. All right. Question number one What are Holden's and Kevin's call signs? Oh, From no. From the meteor. Right. Something was like. Storm in the beginning. Something Eagle was one of them. I'm still oh, listening. No. So Eagle was one. What's the other? Wolverine. Okay. And who is who? Who is who is Eagle? Who is Wolverine? 50 50 that... chance. Wait, so I'm right with those? Yeah. Well, I mean, you gotta you gotta name the second part. You gotta who who who's who? Oh boy. Now nah, this is what separates the men from the boys, you know what I mean? Uh I'd have to say that Holden's the Eagle. Okay. Yeah, you're wrong on all of that. Uh <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Kevin's call <laughs> I just wanted to build you up a little bit. Uh, Kevin's call sign is Falcon, and Holden's call sign is Deathstalker. Yeah. Listen, those uh-huh. are pretty much mm-hmm. the same thing. Okay, moving on. Uh, number number two. Yeah. Uh, why does Luke go to church? Uh, Luke goes to church because it makes his mother feel better. Mm. Mm. That's incorrect. Because, because... That's incorrect. He goes to church for the scenery. For the scenery. Oh, yeah, a bunch of uh, hot young girls there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I thought I thought it was because like he didn't really because his father doesn't go and he went just because his mother. No, he literally, literally has. A, like, he's like, "Why do you go to church?" And he says, "Quote for the scenery." And then and and then Holden's like, "I also like the scenery." Got, yeah, they're creepy. He's got mm-hmm. no, don't don't. Problems. Okay, question number three: When Luke brings Holden to the party in episode two, there's a slideshow going on in the background for some reason because that also happens at college parties. What is on the slideshow? I have no idea. Uh, it is. I don't even know. It's a Alice show. in Wonderland. Uh, they actually. What? Yeah. It, Why they would... have like the actual text of Alice in Wonderland. Uh, but, yeah. There's all sorts of like references to it because it's like the dream. That's not what teenagers do. And at one point, uh, Luke says to him, like, welcome down the rabbit hole. So like, yeah, it's sort of like a whole theme that they're doing at that party. That's not what people huh? do. Okay. Uh, question number four. <laughs> uh, if you were offered the opportunity to go into a coma for 12 years, not remembering anything, but come out completely fit and buff and good looking, but also <laughs> kind of dim. Would you do it? Yes. Cause I'm already dim. I just need to be in shape as a, like I've already fit. I already fit half of that criteria. Now put me in shape. Right. Perfect. That is, that, <laughs> that is the wrong answer. Is that what I have to do? The correct answer was be like, no, I couldn't possibly do that to my wife and to my mother and to my brothers. Like, and you know, nah, that'll be fine. Ways. They'll be much better without Man, me. Much better like without me. Four. Okay. Uh, number five. They'll, they'll know where I'm at. They know I'm okay. I'm also looking fantastic. They'll be so happy for me. Uh-huh. Uh, number five. Let's see if you can get on the board with this one at least. On a scale of Big Bird to Freddie Mercury. How amazing is the yellow jacket worn by the bad guy in this TV show? I, one of my questions of this, of this TV show is, how come he never once changes his he clothes? He does change his like clothes ever. at the end of episode two when he's at home and he's sitting down. Yeah. So you're wrong. Disproven. It's a, again. it's a pretty solid. So I'll give it a sinestro core, sinestro core yellow that's what i'll do oh, that's my i'm sorry that's incorrect the correct answer is tweety bird that is oh correct, you know that's right that's, next to it i know when you look at the so close. scale you're so close like sinestro core and then tweety bird they're like so right there. close justin that's an over that's five 
Listen, this is just my normal. This is my. No, I'm par for the course right now. I normally do, so that's okay. You know, I usually average like one point five. This is like a flat out zero. This is this is terrible. This is. This is Listen, boring. I'm just performing like my kids on their tests. That's all it is. All right, new challenges. You ready to go? You got one. Yeah, I got, one. I got one. What do you got? Let's hear it. So, uh, I uh, am tired of watching freeform shows, and I gave you good <laughs> two things. You also so made me watch a, the live death of a man, like an actual death. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I guess so. Like I, can't, I understand yeah. that, but uh, I'm gonna watch. Have you watch something equivalent to watching the live death of a man? Uh, you're gonna watch Adam Sandler's The Do Over on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, starting. I've actually already watched the, it. So nice try. So you're gonna rewatch it then. Okay. We'll rewatch it. It's fine. And then uh, just remember, I can have <laughs> you watch episodes about. three and four of Siren. Oh please, God, don't yeah, could do that. All right, the do over. Oh, well, yeah. For you me. really want me to watch a do over? Like, okay, I'll do it. All right. Yeah, yeah. Finishing off the Freeform Challenge trilogy, I would like you to watch the creme de la creme of Freeform Entertainment. <laughs> Is it make it or I'd break like it? I'll just ask my wife all these questions. The first two episodes of Shadow Hunters, the Mortal Instruments. What, what's Shadow Hunters? It's the one that nearly made me vomit. Like literally, I was watching it. <laughs> and again, I watched a man die, and I didn't vomit. <laughs> I watched the I watched death an of a actual man. death of a man when his and I was head exploded. fine with that. I was cool, this, but this one, I nearly vomited like ten minutes in. I I hated it. Whew, it's awful. Uh, I should also point out that I watched the whole first season of Beyond. Um, I've only watched two episodes of Siren. I'm thinking of continuing Siren. I don't know. We'll see. And I'm going to watch you. Does it get any? Be- the, what What is the reason why it's what he? So basically, is, there's is, like this whole dream world that he has access to. Okay. There's like a whole group of people that have access to it, and so they can communicate in this other world. Um, but for some reason, and I'm not entirely sure why, because I can't remember if it was ever explained. He loses his memory, and that um, impossibly gorgeous uh, woman that you were talking about is one of those people. Um, as is like her father or grandfather that which is the creepy guy who kept like being in his dreams and stuff um, and so yeah was, there's like this whole some of, those, some of that imagery was very uh pedo-y, yeah. if you oh i know i was gonna make that a question but i felt that was uh in, in yeah. poor taste um so like there's this whole conspiracy that goes on like there's this whole kind of sinister uh, group um that's trying to do like trying to gain access to it um that's i think connected to it in some way um and then like the church is an also kind of weirdly involved in some fashion. Um, but yeah, they're all trying to gain access to like this bridge that's within this particular plane. And then like some crazy stuff happened and yeah, I don't know. Well, it sounds super fun. It's, it's okay. Like it's not great by any stretch, but um, like I, I, I so just, shadow yeah. hunters is better is what you're saying. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to want, well, I can't wait. I'm going to want to know. Rank. You're just going to, are you just going down? Like in some type of weird alphabetical way nope. to go through all the free shows. I just like doing trilogies, and I hate freeform so much. I, don't know what you're I, I mean, I thought Siren was solid. I don't know what you're talking about. I like Siren better than Beyond. I did. Yeah, it's a weird face. I was gonna give you Stitchers, uh, but then you gave me an Adam Sandler movie, so I gave you Shadowhunters <laughs> instead because Stitchers was actually decent. <laughs> so then I gave you Shadow. All right, all right. That's so like, hey, hey, what's happening. That's what we're doing here. All, All I right. gotta do Maybe is listen to Adam Sandler try to be funny. It's it's great. It's okay. Okay. All right. All right. So we're done. Uh, all right. So you can get us on the internet at lollygaggerco.com. You can also catch me on Twitter at lollygaggerco. I'm pretty active there. Uh, if you have any ideas for gentlemen's challenge for something for me to give Justin or Justin to give me, uh, feel free to drop us a line there, or you know, just send us an email or send us a, a contact information from a. Uh, from our site, uh, Justin, what is your Twitch channel again? That's a twitch.tv <laughs> slash Jehufa. He had to go look it up. Uh, he had it written down somewhere. He's like, I don't yeah, remember. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I'm mostly, I'm mostly going to be active Saturday and Sundays. Thursday and Fridays are real tough because of football, and I'm going to try and do it more during the weekday too. But Saturday and Sundays, I'm going to have long raid nights and some uh, siege stuff during the week. So check me out there. It'd be super, super sweet. And follow. It'd be super great. All right. And on that note, let's finish this off by saying thank you uh, to the objects and entities and people that have made this episode possible. You ready, Justin? Oh, yeah. I want to thank my physiology and specifically my immune system. It sensed that I had a three-day weekend last week. So, of course, it got me sick. So uh, thank you to my piece of crap immune system. Thank you. 
I want to say thank you to my co-teacher that I'm working with this year, who very foolishly said, if you want to teach, I'll grade. Uh, you fool. You what an idiot. Man. What? Uh, and so I graciously took up that offer, and he keeps on grading it and never stops. It's of course, grading math is so much easier. Grading. Yes, it's, 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 yeah, it's still not yeah. great. So thank you so much. Thank you. And I want to thank our friend Keith, who uh, has been coming to game night now for three consecutive weeks while being sick and while never going to urgent care for like antibiotics or something like that. So thanks, Keith. And also, Family Guy is right, by the way. The ugliest name uh, in, in the English language for, for men is, uh, is Keith. So uh, thanks. Finally, a congratulations to my boy, Lorenzo Lingard, who plays for the U in Miami. He got himself two NCAA football touchdowns nice. this week, not too long ago. And uh looks like he's going to be part of the future of that team. I'm looking forward to watching him play every Saturday night. 